Should you be using demand gen? Right now, Google is using its worldwide team of reps to try and sell the benefits of demand gen campaigns faster than Jordan Belford is trying to sell the latest penny stocks. Oh, here I come. Oh, here and further to the sales pitch, which is coming from Google's army of sales reps, Google is doubling down on its push for you to use demand gen campaigns by announcing that it's gonna be removing the ability for you to be able to create video action campaigns. So that's any video campaigns where you're selecting to drive conversions. And the current rollout is that as of March, 2025, you will no longer be able to choose drive conversions as an option in video campaigns with you only being able to drive conversions through video campaigns with demand gen. And then sometime in quarter two, we don't know the exact date, sometime in quarter two of 2025, any active video action campaigns will be automatically upgraded to demand gen. And this is the similar process that happened with standard shopping when Google brought in Performance Max in 2022. As it sits right now, my very strong opinion is that demand gen should not be a focus for many businesses at all. Now, I'm not saying that there are no cases where demand gen can really provide a strategic use for your business, but from what we're seeing at the moment with any Google Ads accounts that we're doing reviews of that are using demand gen, more often than not, it's just wasting money. So what I wanna do in this video is I wanna take you through some real life negative cases of where demand gen is just a waste of money, but I also then wanna roll out some positive test cases that we've been using demand gen. This isn't all doom and gloom, but it's just very much similar to what we saw with the rollout of Performance Max is that Google is over promising the power of demand gen and they're using a lot of businesses marketing money as their test case to order to get more data so that they can kind of work out the kinks of demand gen. One thing that I do need to stress that if you are even gonna think of using demand gen in your business, you do need to make sure that you've set this up the right way. And if you are interested in using demand gen and you wanna make sure that you're using the right campaign settings, if you follow the link in the description below, you can get access to my demand gen campaign setup guide. But as I said, before you start looking at setting up demand gen campaigns, you do really need to make sure that you complete a review of your account to really make sure that your business, where it's sitting right now, can actually see some benefit out of using demand gen. All right, so let's start with the bad side of demand gen. Over the past two months, we've been completing an audit for quite a large Google Ads account where they're spending $500,000 a month. And when we started reviewing the account, that was split across search campaigns, performance max campaigns, and also demand gen. Now, when we completed a review of the account, demand gen was spending $10,000 a month, and it had spent $10,000 a month for six months. So they had invested $60,000 in demand gen, and this represented about 2% of their Google Ads account expenditure. So it wasn't a massive amount for this account, but as I'm well aware, that's far more than what many people spend in a whole year. So what I wanna share with you is the data and the learnings that we found from that wrong implementation. Now, this account was being managed in-house by this business's team, and they're under the guide of their Google rep who recommended for them to install demand gen at that rate with that strategy. And the promise was that they would start seeing results after about that three month period, which it just never eventuated. So what we did was after completing a review of the account, we gave a really strong recommendation for that business to pause immediately all of their demand gen spending and then take that $10,000 a month that they're investing in demand gen and put it into extra search campaigns. And the reason for why we made that recommendation is that when we were doing the review of their account, we saw that their search campaigns were still only getting under 15% of total search impression, but their search campaigns were also converting at a really high level. And this is what happened in real business terms. So the company didn't end up spending any less or any more in marketing. They kept their budget at 500,000. We just diverted the spend from demand gen and put it into search. And that extra 2% that they invested into search, because remember that 10,000 represented 2% of their total campaign, that saw an extra 15% increase in new revenue. And we're not just talking data within Google Ads, we're actually talking the new business, confirmed business that came into their accounts. So 
an extra 2% spend on search gave them an extra 15% in revenue. So in that case, demand gen was a complete waste of money for that business. And the reason for why that business was not ready for demand gen is because as I mentioned previously, their search impression share was so low. So they had such a potential upside to really focus in scanning their search campaigns. They could do it in a really, really safe way. And as they've been seeing right now, the extra 2% has led to an extra 15% of sales. So they're gonna to continue to really go out about scaling the search side of their business before they invest in any other types of campaigns. Now, as I mentioned, there are some real positive reasons for why you would use demand gen. So I'm definitely not saying that you should never use demand gen, but what I really do wanna point out is that before you think about using demand gen, you'd wanna make sure that your business meets one of these two scenarios. And the first scenario is this, is that your search and your shopping campaigns, or obviously if you're in the service-based industry, your search campaigns only, because you wouldn't have any shopping campaigns, that your search impression share, and more importantly, your top search impression share, and your click share are at least above 60%. And the reason for that is because, remember with demand gen, that it's really going out and trying to attract and find new customers. Now that is something that you need to always be doing in your Google Ads campaigns, but if you've got such a low search impression share and you're getting good conversion metrics with that search impression share, a much safer and easier way to increase the revenue into your business is by focusing on search. So until you get up to about that 60% point, now it's gonna be different for all type of businesses past 60%, but generally up until 60%, you can see a good scaling of your business. Once you get above 60% in our experience, that's when you can get a little bit of resistance and you can see some conversion metrics start to drop down. So the first thing is that you wanna make sure that you've got a high search impression share before you even look at trying to go down the path of demand gen. The second thing is, is that you already have profitable performance max campaigns. Now, the reason for why we say that this is a safer launching pad going into the world of demand gen is that if you start with your search and or shopping, then you add in performance max to target only for new customers also to adding in brand exclusion, so you're not just bidding on brand. It really helps to build up that extra conversion data. So you're taking your base level conversions from search and shopping, you're then building performance max on top of that to drive extra conversions and get your account ready to use those smart bidding strategies. And you'd wanna make sure that is the case before you even start any demand gen campaigns. But the third thing that you'd also wanna make sure is that you've got very clear data on what are your highest performing and highest converting creative metrics, so your videos and your image ads. Now that could come from two places. It could come from active video campaigns in your Google Ads account, active display campaigns, or it also could come from your social media and paid campaigns. So they're the three things that you need in first scenario. Firstly, high impression share, Secondly, you're already using some smart bidding campaigns like a Performance Max. And thirdly, you've already got a clear picture on what are your high converting video assets and image assets. So that's the first scenario where we are seeing a good test case for demand gen. And now let's talk about the second scenario of where we're seeing a really good use case for demand gen. And this is at the complete opposite end of the spectrum. So this is for businesses who may not even be spending large amounts inside of Google Ads, but they're trying to market a product or a service where there isn't any highly relevant purchase or converting intent search keywords. So what I mean by that is that you're trying to promote a service or product where there's not a direct correlation to the user searches this and then they're looking for your product. If you have to take them on an educational journey and really introduce your brand and introduce your products or your services to the market, this is where demand gen can also play a part. But with that as well, I do stress is that you wanna have some active audiences inside of your Google Ads account so that you can at least feed some initial data into demand gen. Also as well, you'd wanna have active search campaigns so that what you can do from there is that, that once you build up your messaging, you're making sure that you're really hitting in and honing in on those high search terms. And this is something that we've been testing inside of our own brand. And many of you may know, I've started a secondary brand, which is all about teaching people how they can earn from their expertise and really build their own online communities, their own online paid courses. And we've found demand gen to be a successful tool in that. But with that, we're not going for inline conversions. We're just using it to build our initial database. So we've found it as a very, very effective tool for building our database so that we can then later down the line continue the education and the marketing of our different products and services in that business. So the real take home message I want you to take from this video is that 
before you just blindly follow the recommendations and the real heavy sales from Google about demand gen, really make sure that your account is actually ready to start using these types of campaigns. As I said, they will definitely play a part and just as similar as we've seen the evolution of Performance Max, over the couple of years, demand gen isn't a finished product and I'm sure they'll be increasing more targeting and increasing more user options. But at the moment, it's very much just a set and forget type of campaign. Obviously, you can really hone in, in around the video messaging and the image messaging. But as I said, you wanna make sure that you really match out one of those two scenarios before you go down the demand gen path. Thank you for joining me. Once again, it's been an absolute pleasure having you here. My name is Aaron Young from Define Digital Academy. And remember, if you wanna get that demand gen campaign setup guide, just follow the link in the description below. And if you'd also like to know how you can put together the best strategy for your own business when it comes to Google Ads, why don't you go through and watch this video right here. See you next time.